hello and happy almost new year. I wanted to show you the books that I chose as my gifties from the gift cards that you guys gave me. Thank you so much. My class was so generous this year. They got me a gift card to our local bookstore. It's so cozy and wonderful and I had so much fun today scampering through the halls and um, the little nooks throughout the bookstore and choosing um, these amazing books. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to show you what I got. So the first one I chose, I'm so excited to do art lessons this next year with. It's called Women in Art, 50 Fearless Creatives Who Inspired the World. And I just can't wait to use this with my class. It's got these gorgeous pictures of artists on one side, and then it's got their story. So this is going to be really fun to use. Thank you. Then, okay, so I'll make my little stack of books over here that I've already shared with you. Then I got this one. It's called Young, Fearless, Awesome, and it's 25 young people who change the world. And I thought this would be really neat as we look in fifth grade about human impact and the power you have. It's got these beautiful pictures, and they're all young people, so I feel like my students are really going to enjoy that. The next one I have, my students have been talking about these books forever, the Rebel Girl series, but this one just looked like so much fun. It's 100 Immigrant Women Who Changed the World, and this follows that same format where you have a gorgeous picture on one side and a text on the other. I really love using these with my class in fifth grade because we can read a little bit about them. We can do some close reading. We have this gorgeous picture to go with it, and the students can investigate. This book I hadn't heard of, so I was so excited to find this on the shelves. It's called Can I Touch Your Hair? And it's poems of race, mistakes, and friendship. And it is just gorgeous. I cannot wait to dig into these and see what I can use with my class. But it has um, all different poems in there. And it's um, organized really nicely, so I'm really excited. Anytime I can bring poetry into my class, I'm excited. Now this book I hadn't heard of either. Um, it's called Island Born. And we just finished reading um, the book Born on the Water with my students from the 1619 Project. And so this just sounded exciting because it's an extension of it. We read about Morning Girl um, in the, from the Tayano people. We read the book Encounter when the Tayano people meet Christopher Columbus. And then Born on the Water is a great way to connect with fifth grade social studies as we keep going. And then this book, oh my goodness, it goes through um, a student who in a very similar situation of Born on the Water um, doesn't really know where she's from exactly. She knows where her parents are from, but she's not really connecting with her culture. And so this one um, is specifically going to help her learn a little bit more about who she is as a person and connect with that island culture. So I'm really excited to check this out. And um, it just looks fabulous. The pictures, the illustrations are gorgeous in here. I am so excited about this book. Every year when we get a little bit um, further in the spring, we study a little bit about how the Brooklyn Bridge was made. And I always show them the picture of her riding across the, gold, the, the Brooklyn Bridge with a chicken on her lap. And so I was so excited to find this book, Secret Engineer, how she secretly built the Brooklyn Bridge. And the inside has all these really neat photographs, primary sources, blueprints. It is just such an exciting story of how they had to problem solve and troubleshoot to be able to get this bridge built in a way that a woman was really in the forefront of that piece of history. This one sounds really exciting. It's called Go Show the World. It's a celebration of indigenous heroes. And I'm excited to look this up, I guess that this is from a rap song. So I'm excited to find that rap song. And then this whole book is the lyrics from the rap song. And so if I pull just this part out, you can see it's got some really neat pictures. But I can't wait to use this with my class to look at the, the music, match it to the lyrics, have the students listen to it. Um, another way to bring in different cultures and celebrations of those. This sounded so much fun. Poet of Science, Ada Lovelace. The first computer programmer. For Women's History Month, I'm going to be set. This is so exciting. And so it goes all the way through. Anytime I can bring in women in 
this in the mathematics or sciences. It's very exciting. And I didn't realize, so it starts off. And it's in and, and just the flap in the beginning part, it says, 200 years ago, a daughter was born to the famous poet Lord Byron and his mathematical wife, Annabelle. Like her father, Ada had a strong imagination and a gift for connecting ideas in original ways. So I didn't realize that that was her family. So I feel like this is going to be really, really neat for students to see. And then this book, I'm always trying to figure out the best way to explain to students what it means to be... Um, someone in with intersection, like you are part of this group of people and this group of people and both. And so this book, I feel like, is going to make my life so much easier. It's called Intersection Allies. We make room for all. And um, I feel like this is going to really be a great way for me to discuss intersectionality, um, like how you can be a part of different groups. Um, and just the illustrations look gorgeous. It's got... Some beautiful things we could use quotes from and it just really I feel like this is going to go through in a really nice way so I'm excited to to check this out and read it and then okay these ones are a little bit longer so those were my short books that I chose and then these ones um, I'm stoked so this one is called Indian no more let me get the picture so you can see it and let me, I'm just going to read the, the thing for you. Regina Pettit's family has always been Umpqua, and living on the Grand Ronde Tribes Reservation is all 10 year old Regina has ever known. Her biggest worry is that Sasquatch may actually exist out in the forest. But when the federal government enacts a law that says Regina's tribe no longer exists, Regina becomes Indian no more overnight. Even though she lives with her tribe and practices tribal customs, and even though her ancestors were Indian for countless generations. Now that they've been forced far from their homeland, Regina's father signs the family up for Federal Indian Relocation Program and moves them to Los Angeles. Regina finds a whole new world in her neighborhood on 58th Place. She's never met kids of other races, and they've never met a real Indian. For the first time in her life, Regina comes face to face with the viciousness of racism, personally and toward her new friends. Meanwhile, her father believes that if he works hard, their family will be treated just like white Americans. But it's not that easy. It's 1957 during the civil rights era, and the family struggles with their tribal community and land. At least Regina has her grandmother, Cheech, and her stories. At least they're all together. In this moving middle grade novel, drawing upon Mpakwa author Charlene Willing McManus, own tribal history, Regina must find out who is Regina Pettit. Is she Indian, American, or both? And will she and her fam family ever be okay? Oh, that sounds amazing. So I'm really excited to read that one. And then there's two more. Okay, I'll share this one first. So years ago, I was lucky enough, I won a drawing in it at, when I was at UC Davis um, doing my credential program. And the person, the two people that won got to meet Joseph Brujak. And I won, I couldn't believe I won. And I got to meet him and I got to have lunch with him. And it was just absolutely fantastic. He is so amazing. And ever since then, I felt this real connection with, with his books. And I have a nice collection of his books that I share with my students every year. But when this one came out, I knew I had to get it. So it's called Red Dogs by Joseph Brujak. And I won't read you the entire inside flip of it, but the a little snippet on the back is a story about the coronavirus pandemic from one of the United States' foremost indigenous children's author. So it's all about what many of my students just experienced, but from a different perspective. And it's really powerful. One thing that I love about Joseph Brujak um, is that he always has the story told in a really interesting way that just hooks you and you want to keep reading. It takes um, different Native American cultures and it makes them, it keeps the authenticity of the different language and characters and people, but it makes it accessible for people that have maybe never um, experienced that culture. He also, um, I haven't checked on this artwork, but he always has um, people from um, indigenous backgrounds create the art and he always gives credit to the tribes that that the stories come from. So I just, I was so excited. I can't wait to read this. 
um, and my fifth grade class classes have been very um, fond of his other stories. They love them. So I can't wait to read that. And then the last one for the shorter ones, um, I haven't heard of this one, but it just, it caught my eye. It's called Dustin Grimm. And it says, rival siblings running a funeral home for monsters? What could go wrong? 13-year-old Molly doesn't know how she got the short end of the stick. Being raised by her neglectful father, while Dustin, the older brother she's never met, got their mother and the keys to the family estate. But now the siblings are both orphaned. Molly's come home for her inheritance. And if Dustin won't welcome her into the family business, then she'll happily take her half in cash. There's just one problem. The family business is a mortuary for monsters. And Molly's not sure how to deal with mysterious doors, talking wolves, a rogue devourer of magic, and a secret cemetery. It's going to, all t it's going to take all of Dus Dustin's stuffy supernatural knowledge and Molly's most heroic cosplay, plus a little heap from non-human friends, for the siblings to save the day. If only they can get along for five minutes. So this just sounds like so much fun. Okay, now I'm going to get into the books that um, I won't be sharing with my students. These ones um, are a little bit more on the scary side, but I wanted to thank you guys all the same. So this first one, you guys know I love fairy tales. I love retellings of fairy tales. And I also love things that are really scary. So this one, I couldn't not get it. It's called Beasts and Beauty, Dangerous Tales. So excited. This one is called The Troubled Girls of Dragmere Academy. And this one is all about someone who gets sent to kind of a school for wayward girls, um, but they have magic. And so that just sounded really exciting. Like troublemakers with magic, I'm in. Then this one, the lady at the register totally squealed when I picked this out. She said it's amazing. It's called Skin of the Sea. And it says, Simi prayed to the gods once. Now she serves them as Mami Wata, a mermaid, collecting the souls of those who die at sea and blessings their journeys and blessing their journeys back home. But when a living boy is thrown overboard, Simi does the unthinkable. She saves his life, going against the ancient decree, and punishment awaits those who dare to defy it. Oh my goodness. So adventure, exciting, that one. This one is called Hush. They use magic to silence the world. In the land of Montaigne, language is literal magic to the select few who possess the gift of telling. The power is reserved for the bards, a group that has almost always been men. Who will break the hush? 17-year-old Shay has lived her entire life in awe of the bards and in fear of the blot a deadly disease spread by ink, which killed her brother and made her family outcasts. When tragedy strikes again close to home, Shane is convinced the bards are behind the madness. In the silence, the chaos is growing. With a heart set on justice, Shay journeys to unlock the truth, which may be closer than she thinks. Just listen. Oh, that sounds so exciting. Okay, so I've got that. And then the last one, the cover's a little scary, guys, so don't look if you are in my class and you don't like scary pictures. Um, it's called What Big Teeth. Here we go. Okay, I took the picture off if you want to look again. And what you get, what you see isn't always what you get. Eleanor Zarin has been estranged from her wild, bloodthirsty family for years. When she flees boarding school after a horrifying incident, she goes to the only place she thinks she is safe, the home she left behind. But when she gets there, she struggles to fit in with her monstrous relatives who prowl the woods around the family estate and read fortunes in the guts of birds. Eleanor finds herself desperately trying to hold the family together, all the while trying to make sense of a re-emerging power that seems increasingly linked to the reason she was sent away in the first place. In order to save them all, Eleanor must learn to embrace her family of monsters and tame the darkness inside her. Woo! That sounds like so much fun. So those are the books that um, my families in my classroom got for me by getting me that gift card to our amazing local bookstore. And I just want to thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so set for um, my family. We celebrate the flood of books. It's a Scandinavian tradition where um, on December 24th, everybody gathers around. You get a stack of books. You sit in, in cozy pajamas and you read your books and you drink hot chocolate. So I am all set. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful New Year's.
Bye.